RC enthusiasts, it's your host Tom Cogswell from Horizon Hobby and Spectrum RC, and in this video I'm going to show you how to use our new profile preset models on the DXS. So in the past there were ways to upload models into your DXE transmitter so that you could use it with other bind and fly aircraft. Here is how we have uh, fashioned a way for you to be able to do exactly that. So you can use your DXS with other popular bind and fly models from E-Flight, Hobby Zone, and Blade Helis so that you have more, uh, so you can essentially get more out of your DXS before moving up to a DX6E or an NX6 or something of that nature. Now, in some cases, it is recommended that you go ahead and do that because there are some caveats to this and we'll go through that as we go through this tutorial video. To get started, we do have a update document or instruction document in the description below that you'll want to check out that goes through the same things that we're going to go through in this video. You will also need to update your DXS radio. One caveat to that would be that you are watching this for a year from now or later, your radio may already have that update in it. One way to check that is if you go to the back of your radio, take off the hatch, and you look on the your right side, there's gonna be a number. It's what we call a PID number. And if it starts with SHTK like mine does here, then you likely will need to update your radio. I would say that's fairly certain. Um, so to update your radio, there is a little port here. As you can see, it's a little four pin port. It's not this one here, not the white one, but it's next to that, that you're going to use our update cable to update it with. That cable is, and it's the same cable that we use to update our receivers and radios, uh, is the SPMA3065 cable that I have in frame here. You will also need an adapter. Your DXS may have already come with this adapter. If it came with a ready-to-fly model, it probably didn't, but it is this adapter here. A little two-pin adapter that adapts to that four-pin connector. It is this part number here. And essentially the way it plugs in is, like I said, you take this off and you plug it in with the blue wire. I wanna say it's facing up. I might be wrong. It won't work either way. Just go ahead and try it. If it doesn't work, flip it around and plug it in the other way. And then update it according to the video that I am also linking in the description below. So if you guys need help updating your radio, go ahead and follow those steps to get it up to date. Okay, so now that your radio is up to date, let's go ahead and go over these different trim setting profiles, these settings that you can get by pushing the trims in certain fashions as we'll go through here. All right, so to get started, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold the left trim up and the right trim down and turn on the radio. You'll get that musical tone there. And we have a couple of indicators here. We have the main LED light, as we see it's kind of growing uh, a red or orange here, depending on your eyesight. Uh, and then you have this indicator here, the little light here, that this is normally your battery indicator bar for when you're using smart ESCs that indicate battery level. And you're going to use these two trimmers to interface with this menu. The left trimmer, this one here, will change it between airplane and heli profiles. So there's going to be airplane profiles, four to be exact, and there will be, at this time, only one heli profile, but there may be more in the future. That's why they're split up between the two. So when you press this trim either up or down, as you see there, the main LED will change color. The cyan color will indicate airplane mode. The red color will indicate heli mode. So let's go to the cyan color. And then the right trimmer will change between the four different profiles that I mentioned. When you change the profile, you'll see the LED will move from left to right. The first profile is what we call the standard profile. This profile is used for basically trainers and things like that. A lot of the models that this radio comes stock with, like the Habu STS and then the Apprentice STS. Essentially, if it came with it, you're either on standard heli model, which is this one, or you're on standard airplane model. Standard airplane model has the switches set up in a certain way that you have flight modes on the B switch, 
you have panic on the A switch, and you have a auxiliary, this is channel seven, on the D switch. So to go over that again, you have flight modes, which is normally uh, channel five, uh, or the gear channel. You have channel six or AUX1 on this button, and then D, which in some cases is going to be your flap switch, and we'll get to that here in a second. And then D is gonna be kind of an AUX2 mode. This is channel seven. So if you have to use a channel seven, that's there for you. On the standard profile, many people probably won't be using that. It could be used for things like safe select and things like that, but that's the way it's set up on the standard profile. Let's get back into here. And then of course, all of them are gonna have a rate switch on the F switch and then a throttle cut switch on the H switch or the one on the back here. All right, let's go to profile number two. So we're gonna go up. Now we're on profile number two. So this one's new. Profile number two allows you to use the DXS with models that have retract gear and flaps and things like that. So it's important that, you know, if you're getting into this hobby and you're wanting to buy a Warbird and fly it with your DXS transmitter, this is a good option for you. There is a list, and it, uh, like I said, it's linked in our description below on the update document that goes through the different models that are currently available and gives you any kind of suggestions or notes on it, and it describes what switch is recommended to do what. So in this profile too, we call it the extra functions profile. In this profile, the flaps or channel six are on the D switch. B, or the, uh, the this normally this mode switch, is gonna be your retract switch. So it's gonna be full up or full down. Essentially, it's gonna be a three position switch in that case. And then the A button, I'm trying to get it in focus here. And then your A button, this bind button here, that will be kind of your safe panic switch. You can also use it for reversing and things like that. So if you have a model that has throttle reversing, you can press and hold it and reversing will turn on. Another thing about profile two or the uh, extra functions profile that I wanna mention is that with the flap switch, if you're using this with a model that has flaps, it is not gonna have any elevator compensation. So a lot of high wing planes like a Timber um, or the EC1500, you can fly with this, but when you put your flap switch down into the mid or in the full position, you're gonna get what's called ballooning. And uh, that essentially makes the plane's nose pitch up and you'll have to kind of either be prepared to compensate with some down elevator or don't use it at all. That's If you're a beginner, you don't really need to use flaps. Uh, it is a cool function to help slow down the plane. But in that case, if you're having trouble being able to compensate it yourself, you might want to consider grabbing a programmable radio like a DX6E, DX80, NX6, things of that nature, something with a screen on it to program your transmitter. But it is here for guys that uh, want to be able to fly these models. You might not get the best experience, but you do have flaps on this switch. And then lastly, we have two more modes for Elevon. So we have a, we go up to profile three. This is your Elevon profile A. And then you have a profile four, which is your Elevon profile B. Elevon profiles are there for Delta wing or flying wing aircraft, where it uses two control surfaces for elevator and aileron instead of having multiple control surfaces for that. If you're familiar with these, great. You might not be, so I'm gonna go over a little bit of the uh, semantics or the, uh, the, the recommended reasons why we have a A and B profile. So, if you're using elevons, you're going to potentially have to reverse one channel or the other, the aileron or elevator, or both, to get the control surfaces to work in the right direction. If you've tried all four combinations of these different Elevon profiles, uh, reversing profiles, and it still doesn't work in the right direction, that is what Elevon B is for. So essentially, if that doesn't work, try, num try profile four and essentially start over from there. You're going to go from rever no, no reverse, no reverse, 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 not reversed, essentially on those two channels. Um, check the manual for instructions on how to do reversing. It is another trim programming function on the DXS transmitter. And then last but not least, we'll go over the standard heli mode. There is only one profile for heli at this time, and it covers pretty much any blade heli that's 
larger than a 150 size, and it's a bind and fly. Um, this doesn't apply for older models, but it does apply for current models. Go ahead and check out the list in our document that I linked to below to see the full list and to give you an idea of what switches do what. So to get into the standard heli profile, it's real simple. You just move to the red position. So instead of going to cyan color on the bars light, you change it to the red position and you hit the bind button to save. So in the heli, uh, in the standard heli mode, you're gonna have preset throttle curves and pitch curves on the B switch. So you're gonna have a normal mode, stunt one and stunt two. You will have a panic bailout on the A button. The D is not really gonna do anything. F will be your dual rates and H will be your throttle hold switch. These throttle curves are preset and they are not adjustable, but the settings that are on those throttle curves and pitch curves are definitely usable for the models that I mentioned. Again, check the list in our document. If you're looking to adjust the throttle curves and pitch curves to make the heli fly a little differently for you, I really do recommend grabbing a programmable radio so that you can have that sort of accessibility. All right, and that's the standard heli profile. And then lastly, once you've picked the profile that you wanna use, go ahead and press the A button, the bind button, and the radio will turn off and save that setting. So essentially, if you've changed it to profile two, you hit the button, you, you hit your bind button on the back, it will turn off and now it is saved. And that is how to use the Spectrum DXS transmitter preset model profiles for Biden Fly aircraft. If you guys have any questions or comments on this, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. Or if you have any other suggestions for DXS setup videos that you'd like me to cover, go ahead and leave those also in the comments below. This is Tom signing off for this video. Thanks for watching and happy flying.